Tomer 3, also referred to as Tomer Cubed by many, is easily one of the weirdest, trippiest Simpsons episodes ever. It was really quite groundbreaking at the time, and the show hasn't done anything like it ever since. It was actually a segment from Treehouse of Horror 6, which aired right before Halloween in 1995. Hey, I love the Treehouse of Horror. The segment started with Homer attempting to find a place to hide before Patty and Selma show up. But things get really weird when he sneaks behind a bookcase and then, boom, falls into a different dimension. It's never <laughs> explained how this portal was created, which only feeds into the oddness of this segment. What sets the episode apart from others is that it was produced with CG animation. Back in 1995, this was very cutting edge, and Simpsons fans were blown away by what they saw. It may be elementary compared to today's computer-generated animation, but back then, it was something totally new. Immediately after falling into this dimension, Homer desperately tries to find a way to get out of it. The peculiar area is weird, desolate, and definitely creepy, with strange sounds, symbols, and objects swirling around and freaking Homer out. He tries to communicate with his family in the real world, but they are at a loss about how to get him back home. Things get even worse when Homer is poked in the butt by a pointed, bouncing cone. In a fit of anger, he hurls the cone away from him, but it tears a hole in the ground and the world begins to collapse upon itself. As a sinkhole grows and grows, Homer starts to panic. Back at the Simpsons' house, a plethora of people are attempting to guide Homer back. Reverend Lovejoy is there to try and calm the family and give spiritual advice. Chief Wiggum investigates what happened, and Professor Frank explains the other dimension at length. Wiggum, frustrated by the situation, elects to use brawn over brain and fires his gun into the wall that Homer slipped into. The bullets whiz right. past Homer and then sink into the threatening black hole that is only growing larger. <coughs> Bart steps up to save his dad, tying a rope around his waist and then leaping into the third dimension. Right before our very eyes, he transforms into a three-dimension version of himself, giving the audience a first look at Bart and CG. At this point, the black hole is now taking up most yeah, of the entire yeah, universe, sucking down a number of objects and widening by the second. Bart sees how serious things are and doesn't... But I'm not even what in this dimension for very long. However, since he's still tethered to the real world, he reaches out to his dad and tells him to leap across the divide and grab hold of him. Homer thinks getting over the black hole will be simple. He's the king, son. But instead of getting across to the safety of his son's arms, Homer is sucked into the vortex, shatters into numerous pieces, and then disappears. Before he can also be sucked into the black hole, Bart is yanked back into the real world as the CG universe collapses in on itself. This news is broken to Marge and the rest of Springfield, letting them know that Homer is gone, lost in some sort of alternate dimension with no chance of coming home. We then witness the real world, our world, completely filmed in live action. A completely CG Homer falls from the sky into modern day Los Angeles and wanders down the sidewalk, terrified nah, by the environment crazy around crazy right As like, humans look on in shock and horror, Homer finds some sort of comfort when he discovers an erotic cake store. He may be far from home, but at least he still has desserts. This entire episode was not just really weird, but it was truly cutting edge, too. At that point in the 90s, computer animation was still very rudimentary and rough around the edges. But this episode featured some really impressive, ahead-of-its-time animation that is still being talked about to this day. The Springfield Files is a pure product of the 1990s and combined two of the most popular shows of the time. The Simpsons, and The X-Files. And it also happens to be one of the trippiest and most unexpected episodes of the show ever. Star Trek's Leonard Nimoy appears as himself, and kicks off the episode, diving into a peculiar sci-fi-tinged incident in Springfield. As most memorable events do, this one started one night at Moe's Tavern. It was a regular Friday <laughs> night with Homer memorable. indulging his fair share of red tick mm. beer, a brew made with real dogs swimming in the tanks. After a breathalyzer test reveals he shouldn't be driving, Homer decides to walk home instead. However, he drunkenly veers off course and gets lost in the local forest. Upon stumbling into a clearing, he encounters a glowing, skeletal alien. Despite Yo, the alien's oh, Mr. Burns, off there. Hey, that shit was sweet. Sprinting through a cornfield in sheer terror. The rest of the Simpsons dismiss Homer's tale, saying that he saw this because he had too much to drink at Moe's. Springfield PD also brush off his report. That's when things take a very strange turn. FBI agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully Markets can move just as swiftly as your day does. Scully arrive at the Simpson home to investigate. Despite rigorous psychological tests, Homer fails to produce any evidence of his alien sighting. Homer finds solace in Bart's unwavering belief. When he is at his lowest, Homer is reassured by Bart and told that his son believes him because You seem so damn sure. This puts a smile on Homer's face and gives him confidence to stand by his story. 
The next Friday, Homer and Bart camp out in the clearing with Ned Flanders gear, and Bart witnesses the alien for the first time. The glowing alien promises peace, but Homer inadvertently scares it off by stepping into their campfire. Just as Homer regrets that he once again missed catching any proof, Bart reveals he captured the encounter on tape with Flanders' video camera. They celebrate their newfound evidence. Leonard Nimoy wraps up his narration, concluding with Homer and Bart's proof of their alien encounter. In another bizarre moment from this episode, Nimoy abruptly takes off, leaving the team to take over narrating. Though Bart's tape is a mere three seconds of static with a brief glimpse of the alien, Springfield starts to believe Homer, except for Lisa. The townsfolk gather at the Simpsons' house, with Barney asking if the alien is Santa Claus. One week later, the entire town, including Leonard Nimoy, assembles in the clearing. The alien reappears, promising love, which for some odd reason only sets the people of Springfield off. A riot quickly ensues until Lisa reveals the alien is actually Mr. Burns. All is revealed then. Smithers explains that Burns undergoes weekly longevity treatments, leaving him twisted, disoriented, and with a sweet voice due to chiropractic adjustments, anesthesia, I remember, and throat I remember all this. This isn't a creature I seen from it. I remember this episode. It's simply the beginning one, I don't think it was like one of the super beginning ones, because like, I watched them all on Disney Plus like a couple of times, but I didn't remember the first one like that, but I remember this one for sure. Stand Venus to resident. Turning back into his usual self, Burns attributes his green glow to years at the nuclear power plant and retracts his promises of peace and love instead declaring famine and hatred. Before he can continue, Dr. Nick administers a booster shot, and everyone joins in singing Good Morning Starshine. Marge apologizes to Homer for doubting him, and they reconcile. The squeaky-voiced team concludes the show, urging viewers to keep watching the skies, but mispronounces it as skis. This was a very skis. bizarre moment in Simpsons history, the leaning heavily into the sci-fi element, and bringing in guest stars David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson who were at the peak of fame because of the success of The X-Files. All these years later, it's still considered one of the oddest, but most memorable episodes ever. El Viaje Misterioso de Nuestro Homer, yeah. the mysterious voyage of this one too. The annual Springfield Chili Cook-Off has arrived, and Marge is pulling out all the stops to keep Homer in the dark. She does it all, cuts the ad from the newspaper, intercepts a phone call between Homer and Lenny, and even lights up a cigarette to mask the tantalizing aroma wafting through the city. Marge knows what everyone else does. If Homer knows there's a chilly cook-off, he will move heaven and earth to get there, and eat his weight in food. When Homer eventually opens the door for fresh air, he catches a whiff of the spicy festivities and realizes what he's missing. After Homer panics, Marge finally confesses and reminds him of his drunken antics at past cook-offs, especially the previous year when he ended up covered in cotton candy and licked by dogs. But Homer insists, and Marge relents, but makes him promise to stay sober, and the family rushes to the event. Upon their arrival, the family disperses oh, to explore shit. the various stands. Homer, it turns out, is a legendary chili critic whose opinion is gold for the cooks. He showcases his iron play. stomach until he meets his match in Chief Wiggum's chili, spiked with the fearsome, merciless peppers of Quetzalcoatlango. Humiliated, Homer desperately searches for relief, nearly drowning a tray of beers before Marge shows up. Though he didn't drink, Marge is furious and storms off. Homer discovers that candle wax can shield his mouth from the heat and returns to Wiggum's stand, astonishing the crowd by devouring several peppers. However, his stomach can't handle it, leading to wild hallucinations that make this one of the weirdest Simpsons episodes ever. In his chilly-fueled vision, Homer finds himself in a surreal desert landscape where physics are thrown out the window and everything feels like a bizarre trip. Homer breaks the sun, encounters a shape-shifting puddle, and follows a tortoise up a towering pyramid, where he encounters a Marge-like figure with no face. At the top of that pyramid, he meets his spirit guide, a coyote voiced by none other than music icon Johnny Cash. The coyote urges him to find his true is. soulmate, and questions his certainty that it's Marge. Yo. The coyote then leaps off the pyramid, leaving Homer to face a ghost train barreling towards him. Just before impact, Homer wakes up and rationalizes his dream, Ooh. comparing the desert to a golf course's sand trap and the pyramid to the pro shop. Returning home, Homer finds that Marge is still angry with him, and believes that he broke his promise not to drink. Feeling misunderstood and recalling the coyote's words, Homer embarks on a quest to find his soulmate. After fruitless searches at Moe's Tavern and a misleading personals ad, he spots a lighthouse and decides the operator must be the loneliest person in town. Homer rushes to the lighthouse, thrilled to see a sign reading, This lighthouse operated and by... And then he gonna, Marge he gonna shows, meet him there and they gonna, bro, yeah, I know this one, bro. 
only to discover that Earl is an acronym for an automated lighthouse system. In a fit of frustration, he destroyed. You can turn this into this. Cliff is launching a sweepstakes. Y'all wonder what I'm saying. So I'm playing. Have a chance to win a Cliff trip. Go to cliffbar.com or to your. Destroys the lighthouse bulb, but Marge arrives and together they fix it, saving the ship from disaster. They reaffirm their bond as soulmates. Despite their efforts, the ship runs aground, spilling its cargo of hot pants. The townspeople gather to claim the free hot pants, and the episode concludes with everyone singing Who Wears Short Shorts as Marge and Homer rekindle their romance. This episode is memorable for a number of reasons, including the performance from Johnny Cash, who was never a big actor. But it's also memorable because of its bizarre story, the trippy artwork, and the heartfelt message at its core. This is a Simpsons classic, and one of the weirdest episodes ever. Next up, we have an episode called The Surfsons that is really a bizarre change from anything The Simpsons have done before or since. Taking place in a mystical world called Springfieldia, the story follows a family called The Surfsons, who are startled by a horseman who gallops through their home. Soon after, Millhouse beckons them to the city walls where freshly severed heads are being displayed. The Surfsons' journey continues to the webs at Giant Spider Acres, a retirement forest, to visit Jacqueline Bouvier. Marge is horrified to find her mother's body succumbing to the icy grip of death. Then, at Barbara Hibbert's surgery, Krusty is diagnosed with genital snurfs, while Jacqueline suffers from progressive frozen mortification, a curse inflicted by an ice walker's bite. Barbara Hibbert suggests a remedy, the magical amulet of warm fire. However, the Surfsons cannot afford it, prompting Marge to demand Homer raise the funds, her fury leading to a destructive outburst that leaves Homer completely dejected and despondent. Homer receives a crow-delivered message, only to discover it's a prank from Bart. At the Springfieldia Human Power Plant, Homer and his fellow serfs toil under Lord Montgomery, pushing a manual power generator wheel. Desperate, Homer seeks financial aid from Montgomery, but is rebuffed. Lisa reveals a secret to Homer. She can transmute lead into gold using magic, yet she must conceal her powers to avoid being seized by the king and transformed into a dark sorcerer. Meanwhile, the king chastises his wizards, for creating an all-smelling oh, tower so instead weird. of an all-seeing eye. Oh, Bart, in a good. fit of sadistic glee, is seen annihilating Millhouse clones with a ball and chain. Back home, Marge presents the amulet to Jacqueline, who initially wishes for death after a long life. Eventually, she chooses to live, and the family celebrates by feasting on hobbits. Their joy is short-lived as Sorcerer Intendant Chalmers arrives, demanding Lisa be handed over to the king for her witchcraft. Encased in a bubble, Lisa is taken away, Determined to rescue her, Homer rallies the people of Springfield to revolt. They reach the castle walls, only to be thwarted by the closing gates. Sentient trees offer their aid in the fight, tearing down the walls, but are taken down and repurposed at the ladders. A fierce battle ensues, claiming many lives. Jacqueline heroically sacrifices herself to extinguish the dragon's fire, yeah. transforming into an ice statue and melting within the beast. The townsfolk of Springfieldia realize that quenching the dragon's fire eradicates all magic. Reluctant to usher in an age of science, Homer reignites the dragon's flame, which then incinerates the village. <laughs> As you can see, the Simpsons writers tried something wildly new for this episode, which was well received by surprised fans who had never seen an episode like this before. Everything was different about this one, from the opening credits to the story. It was an entire fantasy epic told in 22 minutes, and years later it's still considered one of the honest but most memorable episodes in years. Brick Like Me. The weirdest Simpsons episodes are the ones that take big risks when it comes to storytelling. And there is no doubt that Brick Like Me did just Yo, that. That's and the left Lego fans scratching their heads and wanting more. At the start of this truly bizarre episode, Homer awakens in a fantastical realm where everything and everyone is constructed from Lego bricks, except for Maggie, who stands out as a larger figure made of Duplo blocks. Right away, Simpsons fans knew they were in for something special. On a mission to buy a Lego castle for Lisa's birthday, Homer drives to the comic book store. There, comic book guy hands him Lisa's birthday gift, a Lego princess shop. Mm -hmm. Upon touching the box, Homer experiences a vivid flashback of his cartoon self gifting the set to Lisa and building it with her. Coming back to the Lego world, Homer panics and bolts from the store. He recounts his vision to Marge, who dismisses it as a mere fantasy. Seeking clarity, Homer splashes water on his face at the bathroom sink and is startled to see his cartoon reflection. As he passes by the Quickie Mart, he again sees his cartoon reflection <laughs> in the window and scolds it. Apu points out his cartoon image on the advent calendar, leaving Homer bewildered. He rushes to Moe's Tavern, where his beer transforms from plastic Lego pieces into real liquid. 
Seconds later, Homer's friends also transform before his very eyes into cartoons. Homer freaks out and bolts out of Moe's. Back at the comic book shop, Homer touches the box again, triggering another vision. This time, he and Lisa in their cartoon forms... Yeah, I don't like know what it is. No disrespect. I don't know if this is got voice or what, but this is kind of throwing me off the whole, like, you know what I'm saying, shebang. Because, like, what, bro? Like, these some good episodes you're describing, but, like, it can just be a little, like, I don't know. I mean, it ain't got me engaged like that, and I don't feel it. But, Macamillie16, uh, no disrespect to this guy. I'm going to put his, the link in this video in the description for sure. But, yeah, those first two, the, sec this, the first two episodes were some good ones, some, some shit. Like, it's just, bro, I don't know. Like, the song, I don't know. Something with the voice. It's not giving type shit. But, hey, until the next one, I'll get it with y'all later.